Oi, 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 what is up the guys, this is Cobra, and welcome to some tournament cast action. In this one, we are scoping out Mr. Player Archer. There's already been a couple of games played, by the way. Both players here, Mr. Mr. Doxun. <laughs> I love his damn profile picture. Going up against the notable, the insane, the mental, the borderline dude. I ran out of adjectives. Player Archer. Let's see what we got here, man. So Player Archer's starting up with some Aerial Specialist. Couple of Phoenixes as well to complement that. Going into Crawlers for the Chaff. Always pretty tight. Going up against Sledges. Choking up the barrels of the Sledgehammers. And, um, yeah. Even though he's vastly, vastly outnumbered in terms of Chaff, at least the three Arclays should be able to handle this pretty well. Um, Red, on the other hand. Okay, Supply Specialist on Red. Crawler action for the first units coming out. He knows he's going up against uh, the Arkies. And so I guess he's just getting these out of the way. He's saying, you know what? I'm eventually going to get Crawlers down behind the pillars because it's just it's just a way to be, you know? It's a thing. It's just what people do, right? <laughs> and he's getting you out of the way right away on the first round. Now, of course, the Fangs are the only thing that can actually kill off the Phoenixes. And so the Fangs in the middle are probably like the only hope of that happening. Is the last Arclight maybe about to go down here? Maybe the Fangs have something of a chance to get a couple Phoenix kills? Nope. Never mind, the Arclights are done on the flanks. And so round one, gonna go to... What does that profile picture actually do? Is that some beaver action? Dude, these profile pictures are both like 2k MMR on their own. Let me tell you something. Okay, deployment specialist is an option. People click it, it's what happens. One of the better... Uh, cards to pick up early on, especially if you're just looking at fleshing out chaff. Uh, haste module. And for that reason, I think Play Arch will probably go uh, Deployment Specialist. Just want to see what Red has got going on over here. Couple of Maxman pickups, additional crawlers. Where are those guys going? Oh, it's crawlers all the way up in the back side. Okay. Ooh, and it looks like Play Arch actually went for the skip. Oh no, he went for the Wasp. Uh was spawn. Okay. This should have some decent effect over here, to be honest. They'll trade about evenly with those fangs. Should just about win out. We also see storm callers being developed as well. Uh, on the side of blue. Which will just ensure that the fangs stay under control. I do tend to like either the stangs on round two or the... Stormcallers on round two. Both work pretty well if you're going up against the Fangs. Just make sure that they stay under control, right? That you've always got something ready to mow them down. High explosive ammo Stangs uh, or incendiary bomb Stormcallers can kind of deal with all iterations of Fangs, you know, whether they get portable shield or whatever, so it's just a nice little fail safe to have. For as the game goes on, the Wasps do win out on this flank, but they're not going to quite have what it takes to get the building down. And oi oi oi. Looks like it's going to shape up much the same as first round, though we might lose a couple of nerds over here. Phoenixes will actually start to drop. Can this Maxman actually do this? No, he can't. Even if there was just a little squiggle more chaff left over, the storm is still being around. He's going to secure it. And okay, man, Red is a little bit on the ropes, boys. The Dongo has got to figure something out. Does any of this help? Rhinos, not particularly. Wraiths, not particularly. Uh, play Archer going for the Fire Badges in the end. Fire Badges? Like, I feel like these are really bad options for Red. I guess I'd go for the, like If I were him, I'd go for the Fire Badges, personally. Interesting, man. He goes for the Rhinos. Ooh. Oh, with a mind to just sell them off, I guess. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I thought for a second that he was going to try and make those work, uh, playing into Phoenixes. It's always just a really, really tough sell, right? Okay. Okay. All right, man. So Player Archer is exclusively focused on crawlers for his chef unit, which is why I felt like maybe the fire badges would come out uh, for red. It's like three packs of them. Maybe just like dot one here, one in the middle of the sledgehammers and one here or something. Sort of keep them secret, keep them safe. More investment coming out in the sledgehammers as well. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I feel like if if I'm going into Phoenixes, I do my best to avoid, you know, sledgehammers, 
steel balls, riders, <laughs> these kinds of things. But what the hell do I know? You know what I'm saying? Bro, I must have tanked like 300 MMI or something since this new update came out. I'm just too tempted by the memes. I'm a man possessed. What can I say, you know? It also results in like a 14% win rate or something. It's pretty tragic. And I ain't in this tournament. Whereas Mr. Doxun is, dude. Good old Doxund. So maybe he's got an ace up his sleeve. That we ain't considering. Ooh. Rhino gonna get start to get clapped down a little bit by the Phoenixes just now. Ooh, never mind. The crawlers are keeping it alive for a little bit longer than anticipated. The marksman. Gotta bring down these flamer tanks before they turn around on the fangs here. They actually do get it done. So this big pod is actually going to get to survive, which is actually a quite a significant problem against Phoenixes. One Acolyte uh, like left alive. Never mind, they are going to get torched in the end. It's still, still not really going to happen. All right. How does Red actually turn this around now, man? How does he do it? Wasps? Sudden wasp dump, maybe? Play Archer feeling confident? Straight into top supply specialist. Incendiary might be okay for red. Goes the heavy armor. It's gonna be like upgraded in like a heavy armor tank or something. Just a big chunky front line. Yeah, it is. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Oh, sadly, Play Archer has actually just upgraded the Phoenixes on this side, so they might actually be able to still deal with these. Uh, get them down. They also go for the field maintenance on the sledges. These are such risky players, man. Oh my god. I'm gonna tell you the truth, but I did. Like. <laughs> I, I don't see this, man. I don't see it. I, I sort of feel like, aren't the Phoenixes just gonna kill these guys? Like, whether they're healing or not, you know? Hmm. I mean, it's gonna make it so that only the Phoenixes can kill them. So it's not doing, like, nothing. It's also particularly good on these guys in the middle, who are, like, a real problem to take down. Yeah, I guess it's really, really good on these guys. The rest of the sledges, though, I'm not so sure that it really does a whole lot for them. But okay. Rhino's continuing to be uh, sold off, by the way, on the side of red. He's only got one Rhino left remaining. Oh my god, he's actually going to borrow money. Pump out additional crawlers. I guess they're going to be backline. Yeah, I think that that's them. Potentially. Okay. All right. So, yeah. The issue, I guess, with dumping, like, a bunch of wasps is on the side of red, like, yeah, they'd have a lot of impact for one round. Then they might very, very quickly not have impact and start to just get absolutely annihilated. That's kind of the problem with wasps, right? They're good for, like, shock value, then it's kind of tough to keep them uh, consistently functional. Ooh. Crawler's almost getting in there, man. The fire badges, not bad at clearing off chaff. But damn. They're also not the best. I almost feel like they're like slightly undertuned uh, for what they do. And would you look at that, dude? The tanks are actually just live loading. In fact, a lot of the tanks just don't even get touched. With the building dead, there's no chance of even getting any conciliatory kills here either. And there you go, man. What the hell do I know, man? <laughs> the battery's also helping out quite a bit there for red, too. Speed specialist comes out, man, for Doxin. Okay, dude. Yes. Okay, right. Nice. I support this. I think this is tight. I also think that Blue's got to start playing around this. He's got to know that he actually just doesn't have the damage to kill off the sledges. Um, so I'm wondering if we're going to see something like... Okay, maybe just... Ma is, is it just going to be upgrades on the Phoenix? It's just one upgrade, though. Additional fire badges coming out. I'm just almost a bit surprised to not see something like, well, I don't know. Scorpions. That kind of thing, you know. Something that can just kind of delete these tanks. Um. Oh my god. Red just borrowing money again. He just doesn't care, dude. He's just breaking the bank. Is this going to be just more backline crawlers here? Where are they going? Okay, they're actually flanking over on this side. I'm just going to pull these guys away, as well as the Phoenixes, as well as these guys. Alright, man. Dude, I really didn't think that the uh, that the heal on the tanks was going to be it. I didn't think that, that was going to do it. 
Actually, quite a significant difference. I mean, the barrier is also helping out a lot as well. Oh, we have flanking crawlers on the left side as well. So they're going to take a while just to pull away these nerds. And now with these guys arriving late to the crawlers here and here, just get in easier. They actually do. These guys in the middle are just going to drop. And as soon as those badges go down, the storm crawlers kind of just going to get swarmed. And on both sides at that. The badge is arriving, but it's just going to be a bit too late. And now, all of a sudden, man, we have crazy speed specialist mech rage sledges coming in, man. And they're gaining levels as well. I think all of them can level but one, actually. Okay. Yeah, these crawlers are just deadly now with uh, speed specialists, huh? They seem kind of crazy. Range special is going to help out quite a bit. Range is a huge limitation, particularly on the fire badges. And we're really asking a lot of these guys right now. Look at the levels on these tanks. Starting to ramp up, man. They're starting to get a bit nutty. We're gonna go overlords. Do we have the cash for overlord artillery? We do not. Which is a damn shame. Artillery might have been a darn good help here. Alright, dude. I tell you what, man. I I'm, I'm putting some serious respect on red here. For the way that he's played this one out, clawed his way back into this, made some decisions that I really didn't agree with uh, on the turn that they were made, at least. But look at the tanks go. Just a damn good read on the game. The cell have come out on all of the rhinos now, so all of the rhinos sold over there. Crap load of bonus supply to help fund this crazy switcheroo. I'm a bit surprised that with so many fire badges on the field, we don't see range. On the fire badges just yet? Hmm. Okay. Ooh, there's actually still 200 supply left to spend. Uh, for red. Move speed, range. I guess upgrades on the chaff are like very optional. Might even be a uh, negative value. Just feeding extra experience. So probably just one click that button. The Overlords coming out is something that is uh, something like have a long-term plan. These guys going on the board this turn doesn't really do a whole lot. Doesn't really do that much. Especially because they're going into pretty high-leveled uh, Maxman units as well. Like, they can't be expected to get these tanks dead and win the game. You know, these Overlords. But, with upgrades next round, it could be a huge swing for Blue. So let's see what he's setting up, dude. Ooh, Red has got to keep these two final Maxmen safe here. Okay, they are going to start to connect on the Overlords, at least on this side. With the Overlord dropping there, this is going to be a huge shot. Oh my god. But look at these tanks, man. Bro, I'm so impressed by these sledges, man. Oh, nice, dude. The guys with the heavy armor are going to get to level next round as well. That's what we love to see, dude. I mean, I'm so sorry, Mr. Play Archer, dude. I, you're like, I, just best of luck to you as well in the next round. Try not to pick sides here. But I'm so impressed by Red's turnaround in this. Typhoons come out for blue. Interesting. I'm almost surprised that we didn't see... Ooh, oh, wow, okay. Goes for the melting points over here as well. And sells a melting point off immediately. We got the tunnel on the crawlers. Is this going to be into maybe... Nah, he wouldn't go replicate, surely. There's too many levels now, right? No, there's only one level up on the uh, fire badger over here. I just wonder if maybe replicate might actually work out. Guess we're never going to know. Ooh, and it's a damn good job that he didn't. Fire badger actually picks up a double upgrade. He's had enough of these damn crawlers. And he's just trying to uh, trying to silence those nerds for now. We see all the upgrades come out in the tanks. We've got some 27k health sledgehammers over here. Pretty damn impressive stuff. I'm not sure if there's actually anything on Blue's team. Minus, like, I don't know, both of the Overlords and a pack of Phoenixes all hitting the tanks uh, at once. That could feasibly get kills on these. But it's got to be a bit of a concern uh, if you're Blue. But I guess uh, Archer's just trying to kill... He's just trying to kill everything else, okay? If just the sledgehammers are left alive at the end, then whatever, okay? <laughs> whatever, right? 
He's just trying to get everything else dead and stabilize. Which, to be fair, it's a damn good turn to do so. The fire badges really maximally upgraded now. They've got a plus range passive card. They've got the range upgrade themselves. There's just going to be fire and flames and death everywhere. Ooh. The crawler's still almost making it in, you know, which is just sort of nutty. It's so strong, dude. One fire badger attempting to be the hero that, well, he was just not destined to be trying to take on a melting point. Not ideal. Overlord is going to get clapped by the melting point as well. Oi, 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 oi. I just want to point out that the raid boss tanks are still literally all full health. Incredible. And this is a pretty gnarly amount of damage. Oh my god, it's actually over by 76 health. Would you look at that, man? The doggo, the dashhound, the dachshund is the man to break player arches. Well, 2-0 and oh win streak. It's not, it's not really a win streak of two wins, is it? You know. But alright, man. Let's see how everybody else is getting on, shall we? Okay, so this game at the top is the one that we just saw with good old Doxon now at 3 and oh, There's a few more still going on. Only Fangs looks to be on the ropes a little bit uh, in his game. Who else have we got up here, man, in like the big winners category? Subsour. Subsour is also sticking at 3 and oh. I know I'm pronouncing this name wrong, by the way. Somebody mentioned this in the comments and... Uh, I've already forgotten again what you said the proper pronunciation is, so I'm just going to keep on calling them sub. <laughs> but alright, man. Let's see how things finish up, shall we? And um, yeah, I'll join you guys in about five minutes. And alright, man, we have the winner's circle, boys. Look at all these unbeaten absolute giga chads, man. Who should we check out? I think we might drop in on good old Illuminati's stream and see what's what over here, man. Ooh, and would you look at this, boys? Illuminati actually starting off with some quick supply specialists. Alright, man. Crawlers, Phoenixes, I don't know, maybe some Arclight's gonna come out here. Deal with the Nemesis Crawlers, you know what I'm saying? I feel like Arclight plus Phoenix is just one of the general best openers you can get, uh, just uh, regardless. But as Quick Supply Specialist, anything can happen, man. So, let's just see what direction Illuminati wants to go with this. He's up against Mr. OG Sammy, looking like an absolute Terminator in that profile pick. Heavy Armor Specialist. Okay. Yeah, Triple Crawler Openers, Storm Crawlers. No clue where we might want to go with this. Again, is it just going to be Arclight opener for both players, I wonder? Arclight feels super, super likely for red. And Sammy actually getting the unlock on the fangs in the end. Interesting. All right, man. And here come the fangs for both players. And ooh, would you look at this, man? That is interesting, dude. This is why I like watching a bunch of uh, these tournament games in a row like this. Uh, and getting these casts done. You see little pattern start to emerge. In the last game we just watched, what did we see? We saw the little T formation. I like to call it like a little T pattern. Of chaff behind the tower like this. Crawlers and then fangs. You know what I'm saying? And there's always reasons, man. Like, even if you don't understand why you're doing something, just be like the Imperium of Man in 40k, okay? If people have always been doing it, just, just, just do it. Don't ask questions, okay? Subscribe to the dogma of the better players than you, you know what I'm saying? And then learn later on why it's good. Might be worth trying out, that's all I'm saying, okay? <laughs> it's a long-winded way of saying. Maybe it's worth trying out the good old crawlers and uh, fang pattern like so. And just seeing how it feels. Sometimes you don't realize how good something is or the benefits of something until you're actually playing with it yourself. And okay, Illuminati already on the, on the, already on the ropes, man. That's a pretty steep amount of damage to take right away on your first round. I would have to see either player just go into the, I don't, I don't want to call it the obvious fire badger, but it feels like both with crawler openers, neither player went Arclights in the opener. I don't know, man. Feels like potentially the fire badger is just the clear and obvious choice for both. Alternatives. Maybe someone's got some rhino shenanigans in the pocket. Okay, fire badges do come out for big Illuminati in the end. And also for red as well. So just dealing with and handling. Ooh. Slightly interesting uh, positionings here on both of these. I think I favor Illuminati's positioning. Generally speaking, if I've got like a slower unit like this, that's like, I don't know, reasonable killing off chaff. 
something like a sledgehammer or uh, all the fire badger units, I suppose, in this case. I do like to put them in more towards the middle as well. I just feel it allows the guys on the right to more easily respond to chaff that's on the left um, and vice versa, you know. Whereas if you spread them out a bit more, it's like if you lose on one side now as Sammy, it's going to take forever for your chaff clearing boys to get over here and deal with whatever the hell's going wrong on this side. Just like those medium units with the slow movement speeds. I like to place them a bit more in the middle uh, myself as well. But then again, given g g given how wrong I was about how the last game was going to go, <laughs> who the hell knows, man? Maybe place them on the outside. It's got some hidden benefits that I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just missing. Okay. Yeah, just, I mean, just looking extremely even right now, right? It's a stone caller, stone callers. Chaff in the middle having just a huge, ridiculous collision. Looks like these Neds, uh, sorry, the Badges, I keep forgetting their name. The Badges are going to have a bit more stability uh, on blue side. And as long as the Phoenixes are alive, it's basically GG. And so Illuminati strikes back. I wonder how we're going to see Sammy leverage the fact that he's got some heavy armor specialist action going. If he's going to double and triple down on just the big chunky units as the game goes on. I find that uh, heavy armor specialist tends to work better with like the medium range units, sledgies, uh, typhoons now that they're in the game, stuff like that, uh, rather than giant units, which just kind of get beamed by melting points uh, and acid. Okay, extended Vulcan range, probably not required on either now. I feel like this card just never gets picked anymore because nine times out of 10, now it feels like almost every game people are picking up badges. And so you just don't really require this quite as much. I wonder if we'll see either going to improve firepower control. It's either this or skip, probably. Ooh, intensive training coming out for Illuminati, man. I wonder if he's just hoping to get his hands on... Both players actually going for intensive training. I wonder if they're both just hoping to get their hands on enhancement modules. I feel like on its own, intensive training is never really that impressive. You know what I'm saying? Maybe both players just hedging their bets and just holding out for that, um, for the juicy enhancement module. Okay, man, Illuminati doubling down on the storm callers, which is pretty tight against these medium range units. It's also going to help take care of the fangs a little bit. So the storm callers are here to kill off. What? Oh my god, is this just like a huge mirror at this point? <laughs> Phoenix has come up for red to match the Phoenixes for blue. Like, it's actually just a mirror match. Yeah, it's actually just a mirror match. Is there any unit that's unique to either side? No, there isn't. <laughs> there actually just isn't. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, dude. Well, I mean, this is good. Like, this is, I, I don't even know what the hell to draw attention to anymore on this, man. Rounds like this are kind of tough to cast when it's a bit of a mirror battle. Besides drawing attention to, like, the minutiae of positioning and stuff like that. Just feel like Red's chef game is just a little bit stronger. Uh, heading into this round. I'll put that again. Blue's taking it on the right. Red taking it on the left. All chaff killers are now dead. Problem is, oh, it's one phoenix versus a couple and with the last phoenix going down. That's gonna be... Oh no, there's one phoenix left for blue. Oh no, yeah, these are blue phoenixes as well. Okay, GG. Blue has got it. No way to get the phoenixes down. And so it's the most painful end. Dude, as if both players round three are running exactly the same units with very, very similar unit counts as well. Okay. So I guess it's just Stone Cold Superiority on Eliminati that's getting him this. We see the deployment specialist come down. Amplifying core, is that an option? Maybe. I mean, uh, I always try to draw attention to like the second most likely option that people could go for if they're going to try something a bit spicy. It is an option, but nine times out of ten, you just see deployment specialist come out for both in a case like this. Okay, red is starting to get the flanking crawlers going, as well as some additional crawlers here that have been mass recruited, I suppose. And additional crawlers here as well. Okay, so red is going absolutely ham on spamming out the crawlers. Deployment specialist did come out for blue as well. Okay. And just more crawlers, dude. <laughs> oh, this is so ridiculous, man. 
This is so dumb. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So we do actually see the attack enhancement, defense enhancement come out as well for red. I would have actually laughed so hard, dude, if Illuminati also went for flanking crawlers on this round. <laughs> but he doesn't. He slams them on the back line. So it's not a complete mirror anymore. Flank versus standard. These crawlers will get a little bit slaughtered before they can really get anything done. They do achieve the goal of distracting the stone crawlers for a little while though, and so now these crawlers are suddenly going to get through under some of the stone crawlers here, and the likes of these guys could cause a whole lot of havoc. At least they're distracting the hell out of the phoenixes for a solid while. We got a big old swarm coming in. Okay, dude. Yeah, it's just like a unit mashing game. Like it's, <laughs> it's so hard to cast a game, dude, when it's. <laughs> but it's literally just the same army on either side of the map. Okay. Looks like the flanking crawlers actually had a pretty significant impact, though. To be fair. Just delaying the hell out of the rate at which um, Blue's chaff are getting in. And just exposing the more, you know, exposing the higher value targets, let's say, on Blue's side. Namely the badges, right? Wasp, Sabertooth. I'd love to see someone click on the Sabertooth, but let's be real, it's not going to happen. Unless Sabertooth and then like buy like a couple more Sabertooths and get the Missile Interceptor tech. Maybe. There's an option there for that. But I don't know. Does it feel like that just the packs of like four Wasps is just too valuable? Eliminati seems to believe so. Just feels kind of too good. Like, you just force your opponent to go Stangs, right? And like, you have to play around this no matter what, if otherwise it can be quite a devastating loss. Then again, there's Fangs already on the field for both players, and so, yeah, they both go for the Wasps in the end. You kind of get the sense that maybe the option here is to get, like, Fang range or something. Get Fang range and slam, like, three, four units of Fangs just all over the place. That could be an option. Ooh. Ooh, Sammy. Are you stream sniping, Sammy? <laughs> I'm just kidding, by the way. That's a serious accusation. It's a very, 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 very important tournament like this, man. I know Sammy wouldn't do something like that, man. He's a stand-up guy. Look at that face. It's a pretty easy call to make. Um, you oftentimes see this, right? When wasps like that are an option, and they're just good for everybody, you can quite safely, especially if your opponent already has something like a bunch of air units on the field, Picking up this, the aerial special, this is going to make potentially a game-changing difference here. We do also see a Vulcan come down as well. Uh, for blue, by the way, not feeling the fire badges in the end. <laughs> Funnily enough, the crawlers actually meet each other halfway, which is pretty funny. But here comes the wasp, dude. Oh, they're going to start to connect way, way sooner and absolutely mulch these guys before many of these wasps even get into range. Just devastating collisions happening on both sides of the map. And now suddenly the phoenixes are going to do nothing but hit wasps for the rest of the game. Ooh, we've got a little pocket of fangs left alive over here, which are making quite a significant difference uh, on this side. Not quite as much over here, though, where the wasps are still going to find plenty of pitch. Just get the building down. And there it is. Okay, man. The big heads-up aerial specialization. Coming out from Sammy. He's doing great. The little stream sniper. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Look here. Look here. I'm not like an actual official hired caster. And this is like a cash money tournament. All kinds of like court action going on. All kinds of defamation lawsuits going on. Okay. But it's fine, man. Okay. So the additional range coming out from the wasps too. Okay, man. I hope that we'll see some... Uh Oi, 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 and Eliminati matching the hell out of him too, and more so going into even more wasps on his side of the field as well. Just It's just an absolute wasp down, which as a wasp enthusiast, not in real life, absolutely hate them. In fact, I have an irrational fear of wasps in real life. Just to fill you in on a personal secret, very embarrassing. In Mechabellum, I love these sons of guns. I'm really, really hoping that we see the rank upgrades on these guys. Are they running Elite Maxman? 
Oh my god, they are. Dude, come on, Sammy. Make my dreams come true. I never call you a stream sniper again, I swear. Okay. Shields come out. What is going on over here? We got some flanking badges. Hate it when that happens, man. When the badges come around from the outside. It's real gnarly. Oh god, these fangs are in for a rude awakening. Against this Vulcan that's just come out. Very interesting that Illuminati just didn't believe in his fire badges. Just yeets them both and replaces them both with the Vulcans instead. I do feel like fire badges honestly feel quite weak. Uh, to me at least. I feel like they're pretty crap. To be honest. <laughs> just, be, just being blunt and honest. Of all of the new units, I feel like they're probably the worst. I feel like they need about a 30% damage buff or a 30% range, uh, range buff. One or the other would be fine. Put them in a pretty decent spot. But right now they feel like they feel like 60% of a unit when you first buy them, you know? Anyways, man. Wasps will collide. Blue has more wasps than his nemesis in this, uh, in this given round. And oh god, they're coming in huge on the left flank. Absolutely mowing down everything at this stage. Gonna trade quite evenly on the right side. And now suddenly it's red that's relying on his phoenixes to plink down wasps, which is not what you want to have happening. If they get the building down, it might make quite a significant difference. They do make that connection fairly quickly. Ooh, they still got the barrier and a Vulcan to chew through though over here. Which is going to buy quite a bit of time for Blue's wasps to get in and do some yob, eh? As the damn, uh, as the damn Scandinavians would say. Get some yob done. Building also going to get planked down as well, and ugh, that's pretty much going to do it. Illuminati strikes back. He's had enough of being stream sniped. <laughs> okay, I'll really stop now, I swear. Oh, God. Okay. Don't know what's wrong with me today, man. we got a lot of shithousery going on in this commentary today. Okay, speed specialist with this many wasps, that's just pretty goddamn good. I can't really see any other option. Oh my god, Illuminati, why'd you have to ruin my hopes and dreams like this? What's that barrier doing here? What do you mean it's actually good? Look at all these upgrades you've got on your wasps, man. Tell me, tell me that it wouldn't have been better, man. To just upgrade. Oh, nice, he's upgrading the wasps. Okay, it, it, it's happening, he's forgiven. We've also got mass upgrades coming out on the wasps too, on, uh... Sammy's side as well, picking up additional wasps. Dude, it's just an absolute wasp fiesta. What the hell is going on here? These guys are just possessed. They're insane. They're inhuman. 150 supply left for red. Wonder if we're just going to see enhanced range, high mobility, and just leave it at that. Has the man got other plans? Eliminate. still got 850 supply to burn. There it is. There's the speed and the range coming out. Ooh, he borrows supply as well. Where is that going to go? Genuinely, where is that going to go? Is that just going to upgrade some units? Just upgrade some stuff? I guess he's just borrowing money now and just trying to end the game this round. That's the only thing I can think of. I wonder if we won't see an upgrade on the fire badger here, then an upgrade on a bit of the backline chaff, maybe? Because these fangs actually, um, I don't know, I'm going to see upgrades on the phoenixes. Fair enough. Okay. Range of the Vulcan. Additional Vulcan comes down. Sadly, these crawlers are going to, uh, yeah, just, just mash to their death against this Vulcan. Quite painful. But dude, I'm loving the amount of wasps on the field right now. This is excellent. This is exactly my kind of game. Let's zoom in a little bit and we'll just leave it about there. Okay, man. So, I think that the overall superior wasp quality is coming from red, but it's so close that it makes almost no difference. Look at this blob colliding on the left side, dude. As soon as those crawlers are dead, we're going to see scrap metal rain extremely quickly here. But whose wa uh, who's chaff will go down first? It looks like blues die first. And so his wasps are going to start getting traded on first. They are higher quality wasps over here, though. Level 2 is going up against level 1s. Meanwhile, on the right side, Illuminati getting absolutely eviscerated. And with the building dying, ooh, that could well spell disaster. Is he dead? Is he dead? These phoenixes have just got to get as many conciliatory kills as they possibly can. Can they even get one more phoenix kill? No, they can't. Would that make all the difference? Ooh! Illuminati undergoing some serious squeaky bum time. Typhoons! Oh my god, what a drop! Oh, but the stangs as well! Oh god! What's actually better here? Eliminati goes for the uh, Typhoons. If these go Barrier and Anti-Air, they might be better than the Stangs. 
If they just go anti-air, okay, they do go for the barrier and the anti-air. Okay, man, so I feel like now Red also has to go the Typhoons. Otherwise, the Stangs run the risk of being stuck hitting into barriers for a long time. Ooh, the Madman goes for the Sledgehammers. That's got to be a sell. There it is. Gets rid of them. What's this? <gasps> Dude! Sammy! This guy is my idol. I never call him a stream taper again. This is incredible. Level 3 wasps. He, oh my god. Dude, we picked the best game in the world to watch. I mean, it started off really crap. Just like a mirror match on both sides. But now it's like a, now it's like a, a good mirror match. Oh, yo, yo, dude. But come on, though. Like, Sammy. You gotta know that you're gonna go up against either Stangs or Typhoons here. You got to. What's the plan? I mean, I, I love the ballsy play from both players, but I feel like it favors Illuminati a lot more here. These Typhoons are gonna have the time of their goddamn life going up against all these wasps. It's gonna be an absolute just, just melter job on the left side over here. Okay. Oh god, I don't know about this, man. This is gonna be a... Okay. Let's just see how this pans out, shall we? Typhoons wiggling around the middle. It looks like they're going to get to connect on the wasps first, potentially. The Vulcan's got a lot to do, a lot of chaff to get dead, but here comes the Typhoons, dude. Are they going to get the connection? They're still target locked right now. Okay, dude, they now... Oh my god, now they connect. It's going to get painful real quick. How are things going on the right side? A little bit better. The wasps are actually quite a bit safer on this side. They're not quite getting tunneled as much. A little bit of connection goes down there. Super, super high damage on this side now. So it's a huge left side of win for Blue. Huge right side of win for Sammy Boy. Oh, Illuminati might actually get the building kill over here. That could make a huge, huge difference. Can Sammy counter kill the building? Every second counts. Oh. Okay, Illuminati. Can he hold on? The son of a gun's at like 50 health or something right now. Oh my god, he's actually going to hold on. Dude. The Typhoons, man, the Typhoons. I swear the Typhoons must have been the difference maker there. I wonder if he's just going to spam Typhoons here, you know. The absolute madman might just spam Typhoons. And the thing is, what does Sammy do at this point? Is he just committed? Like, what? Like what's his answer to this? Oi, oi, oi. Speed Specialist for Eliminati. you got to think Speed Specialist for both players here. It's just too good. It's just too good, right? This late on in the game. Yeah. Okay, levels come out on the Typhoons where applicable. Ooh, the two Typhoons in the middle actually didn't get that much experience. They got stuck hitting Chaff a little bit too much, I guess. So, oi, oi, oi. What's the third upgrade option on these Wasps? Ground Specialization for Blue, which has a lot of levels, by the way. Ooh, but I was going to say, okay, does one of them have shield? Sammy does. Now Sammy's Wasps are fully giga charged and they're gonna run straight into a huge pack of typhoons dude this is like unstoppable force meets what immovable object this is gonna be a hell of a clash man oh these wasps are a smidgen from being able to hit level four damn shame even the oil is gonna come out here the illuminati said screw it you're gonna get some roast action going there's the range, there's the move speed. I mean, both players might as well borrow money every turn now, which, yeah, it looks like that's happening. 300 supply left on Illuminati. I mean, yeah, just gonna spam missiles everywhere, maybe? Like, why the hell not at this point, you know? Oh my god, here we go, man. Here we go, dude. Oh, yo, 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 huge fire comes out. But we don't care about that, man. It's all about the Wasp. I'm trying not to zoom in too far. Just a little bit will do. Okay, this will do, man. This will do. So Wasp on the right side have been finding a crazy amount of pet. Just look at the Typhoons in the middle, dude. Oh, God, it's an absolute... It, it's just a goddamn slaughterhouse. We've also still got the Giga Chad Wasps over here for Eliminati as well. But once again, Sammy is actually going to take the win on the right side. He's going to get the building kill much, much quicker this time as well. How much difference is that going to make? The Wasp has to get over here really, really quickly in order to make this advantage count. While the EMP is still active and they do get the building dead in the end. And oh yo 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 man. Dude, what an absolute wasp down, man. I tell you what, huge credit to both players. That was a damn entertaining game. Nice. Okay, man, cool. Let's see what dude, not gonna lie. 
Sammy for president. I hope he goes on to win the whole thing. Let's see what we got going on over here, man. Okay, man, where, where, where's Sub? Okay, so oh, oh, the big Sub boy took his phone. Oh, once again, I'm pronouncing this wrong, but, you know, it, it just is what it is, man. Big Sub. Phone, oh. Sammy with the phone, oh. Who else, man? God bless. And dogs. Oh, my God, dude. The doggo is still going strong. Okay, all right, man. We are in for a hell of a semifinals in just a second. Oh, man. Ooh, I actually totally missed that, dude. Sub Sal versus a poocher. That's a huge game. We should probably check in on this one. Meanwhile, Sammy's going up against God Bless. Soxon versus Dorgan. Okay, yeah, man. Sub Sal versus a poocher. That's going to be the game to watch, man. And all right. Here we are once again, boys, with, would you know it, another little T pattern formation of chaff going on behind the buildings, boys. Cool little patterns, man. See what I'm saying? So we've got a Poochie playing on red over here as speed specialist. Mixed chaff, stone caller opener into another mixed chaff, stone caller opener from Big Sub Sour playing some heavy armor specialist. And alright, man. I guess this all is going to come down to unit positioning once again. Oh my god, the crawlers are actually going to make it to building, which I think is going to kind of be round defining. You get the building kill at just the right time. To set up some pretty decent positive trades. And there it is. Okay, man. Tell you what, man. Apuja is a name that I started to see more and more often. Uh, playing up against some of the bigger, like, recognizable names. He's a man on the rise. Okay. Sabretooth. Again, I'd love to see people pick this up. But if you think Sabretooth is the most, I don't know, situational, I guess. Of the pickups, I'd love to see someone grab it. Maybe for the uh, Missile Interceptor tech? It's like the crappy version of Missile Interceptor though, you know? It's like the Mustang version. Doesn't seem to be the greatest. Uh, Maxman, Rhinos... I can't really see any option other than the... Ty oh my god. I thought at least one player would go for the Typhoons. Instead, we see the Rhino players coming out. And the Maxman plays, and the Cell coming out from Apuchia on the Stormies. Okay, man. So Apuchia is up to all kinds of chaotic madness. I also love when you've got one player with a very, very structured, kind of symmetrical uh, formation pattern going. And then you've got another player where it's just absolute chaos. And it's like... <laughs> I feel like... I feel like... Sub so, so Sal is the kind of guy, he's probably like... A middle manager or something in real life you know he likes schedules he gets up on time you know maybe goes to the gym he's very strict about his diet that kind of thing right and you've got a pooch here who's just like i don't know i might have like a little bit of a nicotine addiction probably an artist likes to paint you know <laughs> wears very very colorful clothing he just kind of does what he feels feels is right in the moment that's the read i'm getting on these two players man Okay. <laughs> Anyways, let's see what the Rhinos get done here. Which is to say, how quickly do they get gunned down by the Marksman? Which left side Rhino is going to find a bit more purchase, but eh, it's still eventually going to get... Oh my... Hang on, if it actually gets this kill... No, it's not quite going to get the Marksman kill. Alright, man. Look at it be score one for the middle manager, sub -sour, For the time being, in his hyper-orderly formations... With the building dropping. What special is he, play is he playing again? Oh, yeah, heavy armor. All right. Hmm. Speed specialist. At this point in the game, I mean, ugh, you got this many crawlers going for blue. You're going to know your opponent's also going to go speed specialist, right? Like, if you're sticking with the Stormcallers and he's not. And if your opponent goes Speed Specialist, then Orbital Bombard has slightly less value as well. It's just harder to make meaningful connections. Probably going to be Speed Specialist for both. Ooh. The big aggro Wraith play coming out. Okay. Ooh, Obel Bombard actually comes out for Subsour as well. 
He's actually going to dunk that right on top of where we've placed the Wraith. Okay. It's definitely going to have a little bit of a surprise factor. I feel like uh, Apuche's re uh, read would probably be that there is going to be no Orbital Bombardment. Cell on the Rhino comes out over here, switches that out for the Wraith as well. He's going to run a little bit into Maxman here. We've now got the double Maxman set up on both sides. And so one must wonder what kind of value these Wraiths are going to get. So the Orbital Bombard is going to make this quite hard to measure, but I think if there's enough late arriving crawlers, you can make it so that uh, the Wraith stays protected behind crawlers for most of the round. But uh, yeah, we're not really going to get to see how this how this Wraith is going to develop on this round exactly. Just because of the Bombard kind of skewing the results a little bit. Oh god. Those are some really huge hits. Really huge hits. The Wraith on this side, not going to get a whole lot done. Going to kill a little bit of chaff before it gets gunned down. And now this Wraith also latched on by a couple Maxmen too. And so yeah, on account of the Orbital Bombardment... Just feels like this was always going to be a little bit of a one-sided round for red, but those little mini losses are going to start to add up, man. Uh, for Apuche. Ooh, God. Damn, dude, the damage seems to ramp pretty fast now, man. We only just got into round four, he's half dead. I mean, goddamn. Ooh, double speed specialist. Okay. This game just got interesting. This game just got interesting, man. Nuke? Surely we're not going to see the nuke come out. Surely. Click it. I want to see a nuke in a tournament, man. It would be awesome. Okay, it's probably not going to happen, though. I'm just going to assume it's not going to happen. Um, the Wraith. Ooh, not running armor on the Wraith is quite interesting as well. The range coming out. The melting point. Hmm. Bit surprised to not see blue just rely on the maxman. We've got like a level here we can put into a maxman guy. Maybe even spending a point in aerial spec. Uh could well have been worth it here. Okay. Pucci content to rely on the range on the wraiths to keep them kicking for another round. We've got a little bit of flank shenanigans going on over here. With the crawlers too, which is very, very significant, by the way. What these crawlers are actually going to do is very, very smart play from a uh, sub. Just to pull all of this chaff here, over here. Check this out, man. What's that going to do? Well, it's going to expose the hell out of this wraith, man. That's for sure. Also this wraith, too. Although it's moving more over to the left, so it's going to kind of be safe. But ugh, that wraith really not going to get a whole lot done. Tell you what, though, the move speed on these little UFOs is kind of unbelievable already. 24 meters per second. How is that even possible? Oh, he, okay. He did click high mobility. All right. Just had to check. Seemed a little bit a little bit too good to be true. Oh my god, these crawlers are going to get in. Suddenly these wraiths are actually going to get a whole lot done here. So even with the cheeky little flank play, the wraiths in the middle and on the left are going to get enough done for Apuchia for him to swing back in quite in a significant fashion. Did we get any levels on these wraiths? They did not get any levels. So not super snowballing out of control. Big decision to make here for Red. He's probably going to want to push the advantage on the Wraiths, but does that mean range specialist or amp core? Probably not amp core because the melting point is already on the field and so the plus health doesn't count for a whole lot, right? Tech specialist. Ooh, he does go for the amp core. Slams it on the UFO in the middle. He's a believer, man. I'd be super, super worried about this getting beamed down. But then again, I'm not a poochie, dude. Man's almost certainly got a plan to keep this safe. He's got 850 supply left to burn. You see, a lot of supply go towards the second melting point over here. And oi oi oi, replicating crawlers come down. To be fair, man, there's just what, like two, three acolytes? We see another one get picked up here. Acolytes coming out at just the right time, to be fair. Kind of lacking on this side, though. We've just got the one Aki here that's got to deal with everything. Which, by the way, it's well within its uh, power to do. The Replicate is going to hard counter the crawlers over here, so we'll get a huge blob of crawlers arriving super, super late. Still going to be too late for this Wraith, though, right? This Wraith is still kind of doomed. It's sort of just doomed to feed. But this Wraith, on the other hand, this is the one to watch. Ooh. 
Look at the amount of flanking going on over here as well, actually, from Apuchia, dude. That's real ballsy. And this Acolyte being placed here... Oh, no, it was already here. Okay. Some of these are actually going to get in, I feel. Okay, man. We've got the huge UFO in the middle. Apuchia himself is actually, little known fact, piloting this UFO right now. He's going berserk in there. This is where he's streaming from, inside of that UFO. The Crawler Swarm is not being dealt with at all on this left side. And god, even in spite of this level 2 Arclight's best efforts, it's eventually going to fall to the Stormies. And now these Wraiths are certainly going to start racking up the levels. Look at this blob of Crawlers, dude. And now Subsaur's got to react in a huge way to this to make sure that this Swarm stays under control. He has the means to bring the Wraiths down quite easily. But to do that, you've actually got to be able to connect. Oh my god! No! Quadruple speed specialist? Bro! Never in my life, dude, did I think I'd see this in a tournament setting. We're talking 24 meters per second without building buff. So a couple of Vulcans gonna come down. Apucci's gonna just take a second. To just compose himself here. That's why he hasn't, hasn't spent his supply just yet. Okay. Now the crawlers are going to start to come out a little bit. Subsawa is going to be ready for them. But he's just got to calm down, man. Don't do anything too crazy. I know the temptation to become possessed completely by the need to meme. But he's just going to control himself, man. If this were me, I'd throw this game so quickly. You like, you can't even believe how quickly I would throw this game. Elite recruit on a couple rhinos. Ooh. Okay. Hey, this is the plus move speed as well. Okay, but let me get this for the thumbnail. 27 meter per second UFO, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Rick of the sound barrier over here, dude. Are you kidding me? Okay. Cool, man. Okay, I gotta zoom in a little bit. I just wanna see how this goes down. <laughs> Oh, wow, this rhino's actually going to move in so quickly, by the way. This isn't going to be funny. This is a goddamn 31 meter per second rhino. Look at how quickly it's going to engage. The missiles literally missed it by, like, half a football field. And now here comes the UFO. It doesn't give a damn either. The building's going to drop. And now, suddenly, this UFO is just going to mop up everything. The crawler swarm is going to get absolutely out of control. Particularly over there on that left side. And here they come now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, what is this? Is this a tournament game or like... This is literally one of my games, dude. Oh my god. Okay, man. Subsawa in full panic mode. How do you actually stop this? i tell you how I think he can stop this. Well, the, the wasps are obviously no use to uh, Subsawa. They might be useful for Puccia. Maybe. Maybe he picks up the wasp here. Just because of the insane move speed he's got. Steel balls into a uh, crawler replicate could also work. Ooh, ops to go into the phoenixes, man. We see the wasps come out in a cell on one pack of wasps. I don't know if the wasps are going to do anything. Okay, yeah, that's what I was going to say, man. I swear to God I was going to say this. Um, Energy diffraction and energy absorption. I think it's a possible play. Ah, oh, he doesn't quite have the supply to do it. Okay, I thought maybe he was just going to go full Giga Chad tank mode melting points. And maybe that's how we deal with it. That would have been incredibly meme-worthy as well. But alas, we're not quite going to see it. Let's see if these multi-targeting melting points are going to be enough. It's a lot of stopping power in the middle of the field now. Oh god. If Subsau had just a bit more health. Oh my god, the move speed on these crawlers. Bro, this is going to be 36 meter per second move speed crawlers. No way, this is going to be... This is ridiculous. Dude, he can even give them subterranean blitz. He can afford to do so. No, he didn't do it. He's over. He's, he over. He spent too much to do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, there's the borrow money. These crawlers are still just absolutely ridiculous, dude. Thirty-six meters per second. There it is. Okay, man. Look at the speed of these little sons of guns now, dude. The multi tagger melting points have got a hell of a lot to do. They're doing pretty damn well, though. They're going to completely shut down the rhinos. Here comes the Wraith. they got to get the building killed, by the way. They're still heavily relying on getting the buildings dead. Pucci's uh, Wraith is going to drop in the middle. 
Can he get it done on this side? I don't think he's quite gonna make it. And oi 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 dude. It's not quite over. The Rhino's getting to connect over here. We might actually be able to take a dub on this side, but oh my goodness. I didn't even see that we're flanking wasps over there. And Apuchia now takes a very, very steep defeat indeed. And oh my god. Lives on 8 health as we go into round 8. And here we go, man. Game on now, dude. Okay, what now? You know what I'm saying? Senior Defense Specialist comes out from the Apuch. Fair enough. I do wonder if we want to see, like, range and energy absorption come out on the melting points here. I think that would be awesome. Footler is the viewer. Whether it's the best player or not, that's entirely different. See a cell come out on the Rhino. Completely understandable and respectable. Okay. Whatever wasps were placed upon this flank were, were evidently sold. These are going to be Electromag Stormcallers, right? Are they going to be? Is that the plan with these? Yes, it is. I'm surprised we don't see one just like right here, man. And just get the shot off right away on this son of a gun. Still 1500 supply to spend. Sub sour. He's just going to go into range. Uh, sorry, uh, just uh, building range and upgrades. 1000 left. I'd be quite shocked if we didn't. Oh my god, he's just going for numbers over tech. Okay. You know what? The Stormcallers might actually be better into this. They might do. They might, they might be able to do fine, given that everything was invested into the melting points. But having more melting points is obviously better than going more tech uh, in this situation. Okay, dude. Man, I can't get over this game. This game is insane. Here we go. I mean, it's just a lot of melting points now. It's just a lot. Can we see anything get through on the building? A lot of crawlers coming through over here. They do get the Vulcan dead. One melting point goes down. Oh my god, the crawlers are going to do it. The crawlers are piling in. They're killing everything. Building's going to fly over there. And now suddenly this Wraith is going to have an absolute field day as it brings down this first melting point. With its insane move speed, these units can make so much use of the building uh, debuff. And wow, dude. He's actually going to do it. He's actually going to do it. Dude, what a valiant defense as well. Can I just say? Like, games like this are pretty funny. They're made even better when the likes of uh, Subsawa is actually putting up just a really, really good defense as well. But oi, 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 oi. What a game, man. Okay, dude, let's get back to the lobby real quick. See how everybody else is getting on. Oh my god, man, Doxin is actually 5 and oh, dude. The man is unstoppable. Pusha, Doxin, final, potentially? But Sammy's still in with a shout. So I guess we've actually got two games remaining. We might actually just have to take a break here. Oh no, it could actually end in the next game. It could end in one more game. Okay, I gotta check in on what Sammy's doing, man. Oh god. Of course, Sammy's running some crazy high damage, ridiculous, like, carry-style Vulcans, man. Of course he is. He's also got the OP tanks online. Being answered by scorpions. Okay, man. I won't actually watch this game. I don't want this video to go on forever. I'll just catch up with you guys once we are back in the lobby, getting ready for potentially the grand finals. Alright boys, welcome to Sammy vs. Apuche, aka Sammy the Absolute Wasp God vs. Apuche, King of Speed and Wraiths. Okay man, so Sammy is playing a little bit of Maxman Specialist, opening up with Fangs, Sledgehammer Opener, up against Crawler, Sledgehammer Opener. Kinda get a sense that maybe we'll just see more chaff come out for Apuche. He actually opts for more Crawlers instead of diversifying into the Fangs, but okay. He's playing some Speed Specialist because... Of course he is, the absolute madman. <laughs> After the game we just saw, not surprising at all uh, that he's a speed specialist enjoyer. Seems to work out pretty good for him, if last game is anything to go by. Which was just, dude, I don't know, man. Do I just end up picking like the best games to watch or are just all tournament games awesome? And I just feel like I'm picking good games? I don't know. Okay, man. So, once again, Poochie... A little bit of an unorthodox, kind of staggered, chaotic pattern going on in terms of unit formation. It's a, dude, I, I feel like I'm onto something, man. I feel like it says a lot about the kind of person you are, you know what I'm saying? 
Hey, I do put some respect on Sammy's uh, placement here for the good old sledgehammers. I do like them kind of somewhat in the middle, especially up against like fast chaff like crawlers. Having these guys come over and ugh, they're all getting target locked on other sledgehammers. I was going to say having the other sledgehammers come over nice and easily to help take care of the crawlers uh, feels pretty good. But yeah, the whole target lock action. Not really helping matters that much. Maxman is having the worst time of his life. And it looks like the chaotic, crazy speed god. Goes ahead and takes round one. Alright, Sammy. What do we got here, dude? What do we got? Haste module. I mean, not bad. I mean, haste module and portable shield, kind of like fine, I guess. Portable shield may be a bit better for the sledges. Poochie, of course, goes haste module because... Dude, is this just like a Poochie's style, dude? Does he just like really value speed? <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like half joking about this, but... Feels like any opportunity the man has to just maximize speed on units. Uh, he takes it, you know. Sammy also going into the old haste module. Okay. Guess it's just gonna be hasted sledges again. I'd honestly... I think I'd put the haste module on the sledges that are a bit further away from the action so they can just get over a bit faster and uh, and help out. Ooh, god, the flank shenanigans already coming out. As well as some additional tanking sled- uh, sorry, uh, flanking sledgehammers coming out from Apuche 2. So the probability we see three sledgehammers on the field. Fresh sledges coming out as well for Sammy. Okay. Hey, I'm just saying Sammy, by the way. Based on the absolute wasp shenanigans that this man cracked out earlier. Wasp's pretty good into this lineup. There's like no anti-air right now. We might, we might actually see that come out a bit later in this game. Okay. Look at these speedy little sledges, dude. They're already like pretty damn quick. And yeah, once you see three sledgehammers on the field, it feels like mechanical rage almost becomes uh, certainty that you're going to see that button pushed. Currently right now, though, it feels like blue is kind of suffering from... Uh, I don't know, just... I, I, I was trying to think of a clever way to say he can kill the chaff quickly enough, but he can't kill the chaff quickly enough, okay? Um, for that good old Maxman to get any real value. Which is something that I'm sure we're going to see start to get rectified a little bit. Uh, as the game develops. We're now relying on one Maxman to kill off the rest of the sledges here, but once again, dude, the crawlers get in so deep and just buy so, so much time. Okay, man. How much damage we taken here? It's only a tickle. Not too much, not too bad. Sammy's got to stop the bleed, though. Gotta stop these crawlers. Can't let these boys get out of control. Another haste module. Okay. So, if Apuchi goes haste module here, then the man just picks speed no matter what every single time. I guess Sammy does as well. We are talking to the guy who spammed a crap load of wasp last round, too. Uh, and enjoyed a couple of speed pickups, I think, if I remember right. Ooh. Oh, never mind. There it is. Okay, yeah. Another haste module does, of course, come out from Apuche as well. So we've got haste modules everywhere now. And interestingly, Sammy does agree. He gets the haste module on the tanks over on this side. Um, maybe because he just leveled them up. But I like to think it's because he wants these tanks to really get over here and help out a bit faster. Whereas these tanks don't really need the move speed because they're just kind of in combat immediately. Uh, Phoenix has come out from Apuche as well. They are real good into the sledges. What's Sammy got in the tank here, though? 600 supply to spend. He's got to somehow stop the crawlers from just wrecking face. Apuche, interestingly, there also buys a little bit of building health, too. Just making sure that he doesn't get utterly scooby dude on this flank by, like, a Phoenix drive-by. Uh, or something to that effect. Okay. 20 seconds remain. Sammy going into the Wraiths here? Well, that'll definitely stop the crawlers. Gonna get it, like, around here, maybe? I personally put it just a little bit further back. Just a smidgen, maybe, like, even behind the tower. What level are these crawlers, man? Where the hell do these level 3 crawlers come from? Like, we've been buying upgrades on these. How much... Like, can a Wraith still one-shot level 3 crawlers? It takes a couple shots. I mean, it's rate of fire helps a lot, but the Phoenixes are going to deal with the Wraith, and then suddenly the Crawlers are going to get in all over again. 
Enough of them survive to create a lot of problems here, even if there's not that many left at this stage. They're just so highly leveled that they buzz through everything and they're going to get the building all over again. And oi 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 oi. Dude. The use that good players get out of crawlers actually really blows my mind, dude. They seem to know exactly when to invest levels, exactly when to pull the trigger on tech. Whereas like me, it's like, I don't know, just I never upgrade my crawlers ever unless I need uh, subterranean blitz, you know, or whatever the hell is called, like deep tunnel, you know, so they avoid the fire. Sammy going into the scorpions. Well, that's going to help deal with the sledgehammers, but he's still going to be able to deal with the crawlers that are coming in. Was that a cell right away on one of the scorpions? Yeah, I think it actually was. Both players going into scorpions in the end. Okay, so yeah, we see a cell on one scorpion. We keep one scorpion, plus range on the wraiths. Second wraith comes down. I think I like this. I think I like this. I think that what Sammy needs is a master recruit here and get some more chaff coming in. I think that would actually help him out quite a bit as well. Potentially even crawlers here with like replicate. Like more crawlers here, give him replicate, and I put like both the wraiths by the building. Okay, he's going to go into the fangs instead. Just additional chaff on the fangs. Okay, fair enough. That's fair play. Who's one or the other, right? He can still actually mass recruit and pick up more chaff if he wishes. Interestingly, Apuche actually keeps hold of... Ooh. Goes mass recruit but gets another marksman on the go. I guess just for more assurance of bringing down the Wraith. Uh, sorry, the, the Phoenixes. Of which another one has come down. But yeah, interestingly, Apuche's actually held on to both of the Scorpions. And I guess the plan is what? Tanks go in, get these guys dead, and the Scorpion can hopefully just one-shot these tanks? Gotta assume that that's the plan. I'm mostly focused on this side, though. I want to see what kind of value these Wraiths can get. Which one of these actually has the haste module now, by the way. So things have been switched through there just a wee bit. Oh, never mind. Both Scorpions are here, dude. I'm just totally blind. I'm not sure what unit was sold then. I apologize, boys. It's tough casting this many games in a row, okay? I'm gonna miss things from time to time. God damn it. And look at the rates go, dude. Not only do they mulch down the uh, crawlers quickly enough, they're actually going to get to kill off the phoenixes before they can pepper this guy down. And so while the scorpion does find a hell of a lot of value over here, we're now asking a hell of a lot of the phoenixes and they do not get to latch on the marksman, which is really what you were hoping for. Uh, if you're on the side of red. And as such, Sammy strikes back. Okay, it's what we like to see, man. Good old back and forths. All right, push you, man. You haven't you haven't wraiths used against you. I can't feel good. It's got a sting. It's being like being slapped with your own hand. Something. Okay, Obel javelin, Obel javelin. I mean, the javelin's real good for red. He can find a hell of a lot of value with that. Just straight up just plonk it right here. Seems really really damn good. Does he need it though? Is there a more efficient plan that he's got to deal with that little pocket of units? Electromag Blast. I can't see either going for that particularly. Missile Device Specialist for uh, Sammy. Okay. Do you wonder if Sammy's going to sell something here? And otherwise, like, try and move things around? Maybe take like a mobile beacon and just shuffle something over a little bit so it doesn't get clipped. Just in case of Orbital Javelin. Red, of course, did not go Orbital Javelin. Looks like he actually skipped. He's actually going for the cell on some of his units. Ops into the Vulcan. And then the Vulcan gets the haste module. Okay, hang on. He did go Assault Vulcan. Oh my god. Dude, I love this guy. Look at that. 17 meter per second move speed Vulcan. It'll go up to 20 with building buff later on. Dude, I love this. This is so cool. Oh, there it is. There's the move speed buff as well. Okay, but let's see what this Vulcan gets done. Hopefully he can just avoid the scorpions. His move speed is ludicrous, so it's going to get in and make such short work of all of the fangs. Then it's really up to the phoenixes to get the wraiths dead. So be watching what the phoenixes target. I think the last of the chaff has just about gone down. And so the phoenixes now get to target what really matters, which is the wraiths. Get those nerds dead. 
And I think that should basically be it. Scorpion, big hit coming in here. Ooh, I thought it was going to hit the tanks. Never mind. Bit of a misfire. And oh my god, one Wraith has yet survived. They're stuck attacking a high level Scorpion. Well, I say high level, it's level 2. But it's tanky enough to actually hold the line and get it done. Damn, dude. Well, as much as I respect the high move speed Vulcan, did it do enough? Probably not. Oh my god. Okay. It's wasp time, dude. Now, will Sammy once again preemptively go aerial specialist? Will he go aerial specialization on the wasps? I'm going to move the camera down so we can see if he goes into a tech option here. He picks up another wraith there in the background as well, by the way. Just want to see what Apuchia picks, and I want to see what tech comes out on these guys. Okay, there's some more fangs coming out and stuff. Apuchia is thinking about this long and hard, man. He's got some big decisions to make. If the man knows what Sammy's like, he might be scared of going into the wasps. He does go for the wasps, and I tell you what, Sammy does not go for the aerial specialization this time. Now Apuchia has the chance to wasp the wasper, dude. And to actually go aerial special. The thing is, to go wasps, I mean, he's got to. He has to go aerial special. He doesn't have a choice, right? He's up against wraiths with range. If these wasps go anywhere near these wraiths, they're doomed, right? They're just done. Couple that with the chance of your opponent very, very likely also going into wasps as well. You've got to think that aerial specialization here is a must. He forgoes it, dude. He just relies completely on the phoenixes. Oh my god, I'm really surprised that in particular, Apuccio would not go for the uh, aerial specialization on the wasps. I feel like they're just going to get mulched. Oh god, they're colliding into the wraiths right now. It's happening. Scrap metal is being created. And look at how many more wasps actually survive for blue now. And they're just going to be distracting the hell out of the phoenixes. Buying time for the wraiths to get in and get done what they need to get done. Oh, it's still actually quite close, dude. I mean, to, to, to the wraiths dying, that is. But oi, 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 Sammy takes it in the end. Okay. Ooh. That's a hell of a lot of damage, too. Super, super punishing stuff. And hey, man. Of course, it's easy for me to sit here, being able to see both sides of the board and say, Oh, why didn't he go aerial specialist? But I feel like... I feel like that was like a coin toss of a read. It could have gone either way. I just feel like 200 supply on aerial specialization is worth just pushing the button as almost like a just-in-case. You know? Particularly, again, for Apuccia, because it's already going to get some value against the Wraiths. I'd be quite astounded if he didn't push the button now. Because again, it's only 200. It would keep the wasps so much safer. Ooh. So the shields come out on Sammy's wasps, and Giga Ridge comes out on Apuche's wasps. That is interesting. So Sammy is content to just use his wasps as fodder. To just... Act as airborne chaff, effectively. He probably knows... This is really smart, man. He probably knows that Apuche is going to go uh, aerial specialization, maybe range enhancement as well. And so he has the option of either matching him or just saying, you know what? I'm just going to rely on my wraiths to do all the damage. And as long as the wasps stay in front of the wraiths, then he wins anyway. You know what I'm saying, right? So he actually doesn't want his wasps to have range. Big EMP is going to come in. That's going to come... Ooh, it actually hits a lot, you know. It actually hits a lot, man. Oh my god. And they get to tag at the Wraith immediately on this side and in the middle too. And oi, 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 oi. It looks like just the Wasp range superiority is going to win out big time. That was a really, really heads up. Uh, Electromag Pulse. Did a hell of a lot of work. Is it enough? It's still actually quite tight. Mainly because one Wraith survived over here. Finally does go down. And now finally, you got to think. There's a few Maxmen left alive and a pocket of Fangs. The Fangs are actually the biggest problem here. Some Wasps are going to come over and try and help deal with those. And then it becomes a little bit of a slugfest at the end, but Apuche is going to hold on. Okay. Oh my god, dude. Now, how is he going to react to the Wasps having shield, though? Does he get the option of Typhoon? He does. 
could be worth just picking up a whole bunch of typhoons here, giving them all kinds of anti-air. They're much, much better at killing off shielded wasps. Um, ooh, opt into the storm callers. And then typhoons come out for blue with an insta cell. Mass upgrades coming out on the wasps, actually. Okay, dude. Chaff no longer. Now, it's a little bit sketchy. It's a little bit questionable. Because I feel like now the wasps are going to stay behind the wraiths. You know what I'm saying? Which changes the dynamic of the front line completely uh, for blue. My god, that's mass incendiaries coming out as well. Hey man, whatever the Mechabellum devs did, by the way, in the last update, it severely improved my performance uh, while spectating games. So thanks, devs. It's been a damn good update overall. Um, I feel like as soon as it's got to like round eight and there's just fire all over the place, I'm trying to record games, um, I tank it down to like five FPS in some games <laughs> for like the opening 10 seconds or something. Whereas now, I don't know, it's like is steady enough, like 18 or 19, you know? Not quite a slideshow, you can still see what's going on. Uh, it's a big, big improvement. But okay, man, my fear is, again, here for blue, that these wraiths might just push in front of the wasps now. And we're just relying fully on the wasps to get it done. As, like, the carry unit. It's a big gamble, dude. It's a real big gamble. Let's see how it pans out. Here we go, man. Ooh, it's about equal, you know, so the rates are actually about similar range as the wasp. You know, fire on the ground is making it real hard to see who's actually doing what here. Finding a huge amount of success on the left side, the wraith pushing a little bit ahead. One wraith is going to start to fall in the middle. In fact, all of the wraiths are going to start to drop in the middle at this stage. Building drops. That's an absolute disaster. We have a really, really strong pocket of wasps and wraiths left alive over here with some scorpions left on the ground to kind of tank things up a little bit and just buy time. Which is going to be quite key. I wonder if we, anyone's going to get the building kill over here. Some wasps do go for it. That could actually be game defining. But there's just not quite enough numbers left. To get it done. And so once again dude. Apuchi is going to hold on. For another round dude. Oh my god. Okay so. The wraiths actually didn't push quite as far ahead of the wasps as I thought they would. We see laser sights come out for Sammy. Who's that going to go on man? Of course, it's going to go on one of the wraiths. So now we're back to this wraith being behind the wasps again. This wraith is an absolute giga chat over here. We're seeing levels come out on the wasps. I wonder if Apuche is considering pushing the Elite Maxman button here. Sammy may be also considering the same thing, though he doesn't have quite as many level 2s. It's a much, much bigger cash investment for him. In the end, just goes into range on the scorpions. I guess just to try and get these Vulcans down nice and quickly. Keep them a bit safer behind the chaff as well. I think that's a really, really good play, actually. The scorpions are really quite annoying and tanky for these wasps to bring down. So it makes a big, big difference when these scorpions are left alive at the end of the round. You know, once all the chaff is gone, if you've got a good amount of scorpions still left alive, nice and safe, because they're operating from a longer range. Oh, they, dude, they, they, these two are lined up so nicely, just hitting giant unit. Oh my god! Hitting giant units right away, I was going to say. Dude, we see the elite maxman come out from Apuchia. That changes everything. That changes everything, man. That's so ballsy, dude. That is so ballsy. Oh my god. Okay, man. Alright. I'm trying to mentally map out who, who has the best shot at taking this. I feel like it's going to end this round. I feel like that's just too polarizing of a play. It's either going to work incredibly well. Oh, it's deeply, deeply, deeply not going to be enough. The range on the Scorpions is also going to be a huge deciding factor here, man. The Wasps now with superior range are going to connect much, much sooner. And so the aerial battle will definitely go the way of red. Then the question is, is there just going to be enough left to actually deal with this? Once again, it's going pretty good on the left side uh, for blue over here. But I think there's just too many Wasps left alive, man. So even though the Scorpions still persist, there's just nothing to actually kill these guys minus... Ooh... Do these guys have what it takes? Hang on. Hang on. We've got a few cheeky little wasps over here. Going to get the building dead. Ooh, but the counter building kill comes out. And now it's just going to be an absolute slugfest when all is said and done. The elite maxman, though, dude, is going to come in clutch. And oh my god, we're going to go to a round 10. Apuche ain't done. He clings on again, dude. Wow. Dude. Oh my god. You saw. It's so rare you see like a round 9 finish in such a small blade's edge victory like that. The Ion Blast coming out. 
huge. I mean, you've got to imagine that's going to come out for both players. Deployment Specialist, ah, it's just too late in the game to accrue enough value from that. The battleship is obviously worthless. It's got to be Iron Blast for both. It's just got to be. Huge Blammer coming out over here. No upgrades at all coming out on the Wasps for Sammy. He's just not going to go down that route by the looks. He just hasn't been investing levels uh, into the Wasps. Does have an upgrade available for the Giga Chad Wraith here? Which, I mean, I can't do anything but see that uh, coming out just now. One would think. Is there any merit, I wonder, in going floating artillery array here? Mostly for this Wraith, right? Because it just has uh, superior range. To just, like, double its firepower outright. There might actually be a good amount of merit for that. Oh my god. Sammy goes for the battleship. Is he just going to drop the battleship on, a ra on, on like a Vulcan's head or something and try and one-shot something? He's going to try and sneak in behind with it. You know what? That's so insane. That might actually just work. Apuchi does have speed specialists, so those wasps are going to move forward very, very quickly. They're also going to aggro onto these crawlers. It might just get in. That's so crazy, dude. If this actually gets in, we're talking like a split-second decision here, and oh my god. Sammy does go for the floating artillery, after all. Last second, doesn't give a damn. Will the Overlord get in? It's not going to get in. It's going to get absolutely eviscerated. And it's all now down to this level 3 Wraith, who is going to get beamed down. Does it even have the health to survive this Iron Blast? Can it get out of the way in time? It's getting utterly eviscerated. It's not going to get out of dodge. And surely, that has got to be it, man. That's got to be it now. A pooch here, dude. With the damn wasp superiority. Taking on Sammy at his own game. And it was a clawing victory. Many, many small wins along the way. But the Mad Lad actually pulls it off. And once again, what an insane game, dude. That was crazy as hell. Okay, man. Let's see how uh, good old Doxon got on. Oh my god, he went 6-0, and oh, dude. And so that was not the grand final. We got one more game. We got Apuchia, the Mad Lad, the Painter, the Nicotine Enjoyer. Going up against the Sausage Dog. It's going to be incredible. I'll see you guys there. All right, boys, this is it. The showdown. A literal battleship against a dog. It's going to be incredible, man. So Apuchi is playing some quick supply specialist in this one. Might get some turn one shenanigans. Actually go straight into a stack of phoenixes, which, funnily enough, so does Doxon over here, dude. Dropping the phoenixes as well. Playing as aerial specialist. Oh, yes. And, um, yeah. Okay. Chaff Mirror, basically identical on both sides, only difference being Stormcallers, Sledgehammers. That's really it, man. What, what, what is this, man? Is this a Pucci we're watching, dude? The, the, these, these crawlers almost look like... Let's look at this. The, there's too much of a, of a formation here. There's too much structure. Where's the chaos, man? This is too symmetrical. Maybe a Pucci is letting like, his big cousin play for the final or something, man. Because this can't possibly be a Pucci, the artist. The smoker, the nicotine addict. The madman. But alright, man. Let's see how this goes. Stormcallers. Reasonable position. All is not all the way set off at the back. They're going to split nonetheless. And here we go. Okay. Honestly, <laughs> this is like <laughs> extremely symmetrical play, man. And I have no clue what the hell even wins this out. Stormcallers seem to be a little bit better at actually getting the crawlers dead. Or at least until the backup crawlers arrived, then it all went. It all, it all went. Uh, it all went baps up. Let's see. I'm gonna watch my language on YouTube, man. This channel's doing okay, dude. My main channel, my MMO channel, bro. YouTube hates me on that channel, dude. I curse like crazy. And honestly, I've been demoted so hard in like the search engines and stuff. <laughs> it's really bad. YouTube doesn't like cursing in videos, man. They really hate it. Okay, too many little kids on YouTube, man. Got to keep it, uh, got to keep it PG. Okay, Sabretooth. Really hope somebody goes for it. Nobody ever does. Um, <gasps> Doxon! Okay, a man after my heart. To be fair, it's extremely, extremely good going into the sledgies. Very nice. There's a case to be made for Apuchia to go this as well. 
I mean, you don't need to go Missile Interceptor this early on in the game, so you probably won't. Um, feels like the Fire Badges are probably just going to be the go-to. You got know, the Fire Badges, stand them like here and here. You just kind of deal with the Chef uh, for the rest of the game. You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute. What did... Do I not get to... Oh, I don't get to pop up the unit window again. Unless, like, the button has moved somewhere. I thought for a second Apuchi had picked and I just hadn't seen it, but... Okay, man. Sabretooth comes out. Sabretooth gets sold. Sabretooth actually does get to persist a little bit, though, on Dachshund's side. Okay, man. I officially want Dachshund to win. He is the champion in my eyes. Specifically for picking up a Sabretooth. Okay, so more sledges come out. More goddamn crawlers come out. Plus increase uh, to the unit health on the building. And just sort of crap load of chaff on both sides. Okay, man. So the only difference really now is one more unit of phoenixes, I guess. One more unit of sledges. And then a big chungus. It's going to be great, man. I almost want to ride it. I'm going to ride it. Yes, dude. How can people not pick the... Okay, I'll stop. But how can people not pick this unit more, man? I know it's garbage, but it just looks badass. With, like, the scale of units in Mechabellum as well, the thing is, like, the size of your street. It's, like, the size of a mansion. It's great, man. Okay. I mean, it's not going to do anything. Its rate of fire is really bad, okay? <laughs> its rate of fire is so poor, dude. Like, it has to be hitting something good, or it just doesn't do anything. Um... Yeah, I think it did, like, maybe 600 effective damage this round or something. It's going to tank for a long time. Against the uh, Phoenixes, at least. Bought us some time over there, so it did a little bit of something. Gets the building kill, too. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, no, the last Phoenix died. Okay. Nearly a Scooby-Doo there, man, from Doxin. I bet he's going to sell this little steaming heap of rubble next turn now, dude. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. Yay, Doxin, woo! Okay. Mass-produced fortress versus speed specialist. Hmm. Speed specialist for Rapuche. I mean, it's good for both of them. Just because so many crawlers on both sides of the map. Like, it, it, it's never bad. Uh, particularly with, like, very short range or melee range units. Mass-produced fortress actually does come out from Doxin. Okay, man. Dude, I feel like me and this... I feel like me and this sausage dog... No! I'm on a similar wavelength, I was about to say. And then he just absolutely shits all over me. Oh, God, I curse. There we go, man. YouTube's just gonna, like, that's it, man. The channel's over. This will be my last cast, boys. Okay, man. <laughs> well, I do like the mass-produced fortress. That's tight. Maybe it's just gonna be, like, a crazy fortress spam. Okay, it begins. It begins, man. The Poochie has just ended his turn. He's going super, super wide with the uh, sledgies. Soon to be some pretty incredible value from these things. Uh, with the levels. I wonder if because he sees the fortresses now, he'll go into Sledgehammer range next turn. Going into mech rage against fortresses can kind of just get your tanks killed. They go in too quickly, right? They arrive before the chaff does. Um, and they just kind of die. Like, they, they don't really do much damage to fortresses, you know? Kind of just gets them killed. I feel like range coming out next turn is... Fairly strong possibility. Uh, for blue. Okay, man. And as much as I love, like, the docks and memes right now, it's not really working out for him. <laughs> oh, God. To be fair, this would just be me in the final right now. Except I'd still have, like, a useless tank over here, you know? <laughs> this is why I don't play the tournaments, man. I should eventually play one myself. It would be kind of fun. It'd be kind of fun to get dumpstered. Okay, man. All right, man. Docks and though. All things, like, we got to be serious now, man. The son of a gun has lost a third of his health. Okay. Enough fun and games, okay? Extended Phoenix range is an option for Blue. He actually foregoes it. In a complete skip from Doxin, the man has got a plan. He knows what he wants to do. Does it include just spamming fortresses? There's another fortress. Fortress barriers come down. Okay. Still got 250 supply left to burn. An upgrade comes out on the one pack of Phoenixes. Fair play. And okay, just a bit more chaff coming in behind these guys. Ooh, but now we've got the replicating crawlers. Does Apuchia just have Doxin's number, man? He's going to borrow some cash. What's the plan with that? There's the mass recruit, I believe. Just additional crawlers. Oh, boy. Oh, gee. 
Yeah. Oh my god, it's just so many. It's just so many nerds, dude. It's just so many geeks. Okay, so instead of going into the range on the sledgehammers, we're just going to protect them with more crawlers and with replicating crawlers. Fair play. Fair play. Oh god. All right, man. I think this is this is going to sting quite a bit for Doxon. His chaff clear is just not there. A well-identified weakness coming in from Apuche. Does Apuche have speed specialist picked up? I missed that. Okay, yeah, he did pick up a speed specialist, uh, speed spec earlier on. Oh god, and plus pushes the high mobility button as well. So now these crawlers are not extremely fast, but they're fast enough to create some serious, serious problems here. Gonna dodge every single missile from the storm crawlers, and as soon as they get to connecting, oh, as soon as they get to connecting, man, this is gonna be a crawler horde. By the time this round is done, the fortress is doing what they can. Stormcall is actually landing some reasonable shots in here. Getting a little bit of something done. You know what? The Stormcallers might actually turn it on the flanks, man. They do. What we've got is the swarm in the middle, which they're going to take forever to plink this fortress down. <laughs> okay, man. So I really thought that the crawlers were going to get close enough to the Stormcallers where the Stormcallers wouldn't be able to shoot at the men, but they were like, what, six meters off or something? Real close, real tight. It wasn't a landslide uh, defeat that I was maybe expecting for Doxon. I tell you what, though. Doxon, he's playing the long game. I feel like he's extremely, extremely well set up right now. Um, To have some landslide victories, if he can deal with the chaff and protect the fortresses from the likes of, I don't know, EMP melting points, for example. Stuff like that, you know, keep the fortresses safe, make sure they don't get wrecked too quickly, too easily. Goes ahead and skips. Here comes the melting points that we're talking about. And usually what you see is just a quick Electromag Barrage come out, or range, to be fair. And okay. Wraith's coming down to counteract the swarm. We're also going to see him borrow cash, which he might just be like locked into borrowing money forever here. Uh, might be a bit of a concern. Second melting point comes down instead of melting point range. So unless Apushi wants to borrow money here, he can't afford to pick up the range. I like the positioning on the wraiths. They will stay just behind the crawlers, I believe. Like as the crawlers arrive here, the wraiths should be around here. Uh, the range is going to help keep them safe as well. I'd be a bit concerned that the Chungus in the middle, who really struggled last time against the Crawlers, might have some issues. We do have the Missile to help take care of the first pack, which is a big deal. Uh, this first pack will basically not make it in, but for like one or two stragglers or something. But this pack over here might still prove to be quite the issue. Okay, man. So the Wraiths are just on Crawler uh, stomping duty. They should be able to get that done quite effectively, and you know what? You know what? This might end up being the landslide win that we were just talking about, man. There's a lot of sledgehammers that we've got to punch through over here, and we don't have many units to get it done. Is uh, a bit of an issue as well. Phoenix is going to help out quite a bit at swatting down uh, the tanks, but Stormcallers are not the most effective at getting sledges dead, and now the beam's coming in for the fortress, which is always a little bit gnarly, a little bit deadly, and it's just not quite going to be enough damn men. To see this out. And Doxon takes another haymaker. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, yo, 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 man. Doxon, Doxon, Doxon. Okay, man. Tech Spech. Strike Specialist. Any crazy shenanigans about to go on? I wonder. Doxon does go for Tech Spech. It's pause on skipping everything for just a second. I wonder what tech we might see come out on the melting points here. With him getting a beam down, I wonder if he'll just go range on the melting points because he doesn't need the EMP uh, this round to crack the shields nice and quick. Didn't really need it last round either, but... Ooh. The counter replicate comes out. And crawler production on the melting points. Okay. Well, now it's game on. We've got the extra wraith in the middle now as well to help provide just that little bit of additional protection. Additional speed also coming out, plus attack. Okay, dude. Doxon's gambit here, dude. It's his final gambit. He even upgraded some of the crawlers as well, just to help with the trades. This is a lot of crawler production, though. 
Four Melters pumping out Replicate and Crawlers is no joke, and the Ion Blast might just win it for Apuchia on one side, and he only really needs to win on one side. When you've got this many Crawlers, if you can set up a Swarm on one side like this, I'm almost a bit surprised that he didn't put the Ion Blast a bit further back, just to kill off the Stone Crawlers. Um, and maybe even try to just catch the Wraith as well. Ooh, no, you can't really do both in one Ion Blast. That'd be quite hard to do, right? Yeah, I think it's better to kill off the Wraith than the Storm Callers. Okay, let's see how it pans out, man. Is this Doxen's final hurrah? Will he get another shout at this? The Wraith is going to get plinked down after all, which is real painful. The Storm Callers remain. Is that enough to win out in these trades? We do also have Replicating Crawlers on red, remember? So these trades, if he starts to win them, it could snowball in his favor quite handily. Looks like he's actually winning out the trade in the middle uh, on this occasion now. The melting points, how far away? They're about to pump out a new wave of crawlers. We only have one wraith left standing. And so it's going to take a while to plink all of these little nerds down. It's also trying to bring down phoenixes as well. It's got to get those dead. Oh god, the one phoenix survives. And that's an absolute disaster, dude. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Well, I tell you what, Apuchia, he's one of those absolute mad lads. Well, dude, if a player of this kind of like, this kind of caliber, this kind of setting, gets a step ahead like this, and I feel like he did, it was like around like round three or something, uh, he got that step ahead with the big crawler replicate player that Doxin just wasn't ready for. Recovering from something like that against such a damn solid player is always going to be a damn uphill battle. But I tell you what, man, Doxin played some of the best games I've seen uh, in the storm. Actually, we only spectated one of his games, but it was the one that totally caught me off guard with his crazy sledgehammer plays. And it worked out so, so damn good. Made me eat my words, you know what I'm saying? Big, big respect to both players, and thanks to you for watching as well. Hope you also did enjoy this happy little tournament cast. It's been awesome. I need to go drink some water for my poor throat <laughs> and eat something. And then I'm going to play some Save 6 with the wife for the rest of the evening, and it's going to be awesome. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you also did enjoy, and I'm going to catch all of y'all just a tad bit later, man.